I used an industrial CNC machine every day for almost a decade when I was working in the sign industry. And my days were plagued with tool changes, uneven waste boards, and frustrating out-of-date software. So when MakeAir reached out to me and asked if I'd like to test out their Carvera CNC, I was all ears. The Carvera is a fully enclosed desktop CNC machine with features that I'd only seen previously on machines that cost tens of thousands of dollars. So today I'll take you through a few CNC projects and we can get a greater understanding of why this machine should earn a spot in your workshop. First, some specs. The machine is fully enclosed with a lid that swivels up with the help of some gas struts making this a one-handed operation and keeping the lid out of your way during setup and removal of your workpiece. There's some built-in LED lights here that do a great job at illuminating the tool head. The usable area measures 36 centimeters on the X, 24 centimeters on the Y, and 14 centimeters of Z clearance. There's a built-in vacuum and dust collection bin in the back left of the chamber, ensuring your workpiece is free of debris, and the bin slides out for easy cleaning. You can also switch the dust collection hose to a pass-through port to use a vacuum or external dust collector. The dust shoe is spring-loaded on a linear rail, and this can be locked out of the way or removed entirely. There's also an air assist nozzle for better chip clearance. This requires an air compressor connected to the back of the machine with this compression fitting. Rigidity is key for milling gray parts, so the X and Z both use sets of linear rails. And under the wasteboard here, we can see that the Y axis uses some beefy 25 millimeter linear rods. All axes are lead screw driven and connected to closed loop stepper motors which means the machine knows the location of the tool head at all times. The spindle is belt driven by a 200 watt brushless motor with a maximum RPM of 15,000 and ships with an eighth inch collet installed but supports up to a quarter inch collet. There's a tool holder on the right side of the wasteboard that houses up to six bits and the top spot here is reserved for a wireless height probe. This is recharged when it's inserted back into its sleeve. To accurately fetch tools, the Carver uses a small laser to pinpoint the exact location of each bit's shank before retrieval. Then it uses this small button to accurately measure tool length after each bit is retrieved. There's an integrated 2.5 watt laser diode on the left side of the tool head if you want to do some engraving on your projects. The machine comes fully assembled, aside from bolting on the included tablet slash phone holder and plugging in the safety stop switch. You can connect to this machine over USB, but I'll use my laptop and the Carver controller software to operate it wirelessly. There's also an Android app you can use on your phone and an iOS app in development. The machine ships with a wasteboard installed, but to prolong the life of it, I opted to cut a few pieces of 8th inch MDF on my laser cutter to match the existing holes so I can easily access the pre-installed fixture nuts. Supplied with the machine is a handful of fixture options neatly organized in this case. There's some step-by-step -step instructions to complete a few sample projects in the included example booklet. So let's run through the LED lamp tutorial to get an idea of what this machine can do. First, we start with a PCB. The machine gathers height data of the stock using the wireless probe before cutting some traces with the V-bit.
Then we can give it a light scuff sand to help adhere the UV mask coating before hardening it with a UV light. Next, the machine will use the UV mask removal tool to remove sections of the coating around where the through hole components will be placed so we have some bare copper to solder to. Finally, the machine cuts the through holes before cutting the outline of the PCB, leaving a few tabs. Next, we can cut the base out of this block of ABS plastic. And for this, I made sure the built-in dust collection was enabled. There was still a bit of mess to clean up in the chamber, but check out how much of the ABS was sucked up by this built-in vacuum. That's pretty impressive. We can cut the ABS part away from the waste stock using the included saw. Next, we can load up a piece of acrylic to engrave. They give you a handful of different tool paths for this, so I opted for the R2-D2 image. While that engraves, I soldered all the components to the PCB. And here's the finished acrylic piece. Finally, we can cut the small capacitive touch button out of this piece of five millimeters thick aluminum. Then all that's left to do is assemble the parts. This is a great little project that really shows off all the features of the Carvera and familiarizes the user with the probing and material setup process. Now before we move on we should probably talk about price. The Makeera Carvera CNC comes in at just over 5000 US dollars but I think the price is justified given this machine's capabilities. You could spend a lot less on a more bare bones CNC, but you'll be forced to use some pretty bad controller software and you'd be looking at a long upgrade path to reach feature parity with this machine. Alternatively, Makeera has the Carvera Air CNC, a comparable machine that uses a quick release mechanism for tool changes instead of the auto tool changer. The Carvera Air comes in at just over $2,000, so it's definitely something to consider. And right now, Makeera is having a spring sale, so you can pick these machines up at a discounted price until April 7th. Check out the link in the description to learn more. When it comes to generating our own G-code or tool paths for this machine, Makeera provides their own CAM software, Makeera CAM. But you can use pretty much any CAM software, and Makeara provides post-processors and tool libraries for Fusion 360 and vCarve. Fusion is my CAD software of choice, so let's jump into that and start our first project. An aluminum keychain for my truck keys. I pulled in an SVG, extruded it, and created a small loop for a key ring. A few finishing touches, and we can switch over to the manufacturing workspace. 
From here, we need to create a setup, selecting our machine, defining our material stock, and the placement of the model within the stock. For this keychain, I'll use the leftover piece of aluminum from the capacitive touch button, and I can gather all the needed dimensions with my calipers. Make Air includes some recommended feeds and speeds in their documentation, so I'll refer to those when creating my toolpaths. We can export our toolpaths and send them directly to the machine via Wi-Fi. And here's the result. It truly is amazing that I never had to manually change a bit or probe a z-axis height throughout the course of this being cut. A little cutting and filing to remove and clean up the location of the tabs, and here's the final result. That's all for today, but I'll have some more content on this machine soon, so leave me any questions you have down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.